Hi everyone, this is Anna Finch from Finch Press Publishing. So today's video is all about time management. Um, I'm just going to go over some tricks and things that worked for me. Um, these could help you or, or may not work for you. It just depends on what you, what's suitable for your current situation and your mindset. So if you have a busy schedule, you definitely need to use time management. Um, time management is something we all use. Sometimes we don't think about it much, but generally speaking, you get it all done. You need to make sure that you get the most urgent or important things done first before tackling some of the smaller or less important items on a list. Um, the reason for this is if you do the one the tasks of things that maybe not be as um, important or as difficult first then as you start to make your way through and you're starting with the least important you start to lose interest and engagement and you start to put off the bigger <laughs> um, so these are just some helpful tips that could make managing your time a lot easier so one of the number one things that I use is phone reminders. So you probably do this already um, for birthdays and doctor's appointments. But I use reminders on my phone to tell me um, things like, okay, have you met your daily word goal? Or to remind me, you need to write this many words or this many chapters today for this particular book. Um, I put reminders and I actually put schedules on my phone so I block out say 9am to 10am I do this um, or in between my break do this particular task um, so I try to use my phone reminders and calendars to schedule my day um, you can you can also with the reminders on your phone you can also set it so it reminds you daily, weekly, or if it reminds you 10 minutes before you need to do something or a day before you need to do something. So it's really helpful and this is something I find really helpful because I've got my phone on me all the time. The reminders on my phone actually work really well. Number two, to-do lists. Um, this can be handwritten, can be on a computer, on a whiteboard, sticky notes on your phone anywhere um, just make sure it's easily visible visible from where you're working or where you're spending most of your day so if you work spend most of your day at the computer because you are working on um, a novel or if you're working on programming or coding or whatever it is have your to-do list somewhere that's easy for you to see so either directly in front of you could be on the computer screen so you might have sticky notes on the computer screen i know that's an option for macs you can have um sticky notes on the actual desk so when you typing you see oh i've got to do this task um i do to-do lists on my whiteboard so I've got a little whiteboard in my room and I write down what I need to get done in the day. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It depends on my mood, but generally speaking, I cross off at least one thing on that list. Um, when I make those lists, I try to make sure that the most important thing is at the top and I get that done. Um, and the other two or three things that are on the whiteboard are not as important and can actually be... A bit more flexible with the days so I don't feel like oh I didn't get this what I need to have done I'm like no I got the most important thing done that's the main thing I needed done these other tasks I can leave it I can do it after a break sometimes you need a break <laughs> um, especially if you've got like 10 things you need to do just breaking up your day into smaller chunks okay do this one thing in this amount of time after you finish it take a break then do the second thing um, now I recommend that you put the most important thing on the top and so that as you work your way down the list 
you get the most urgent things done first. Um, you could put the the things you could do relatively quickly at the top of the list and work your way down so that you get that sense of achievement. Like, yeah, I completed this. Or, you know what, I'm actually going through my whole list. <laughs> um, but whatever order you do, you need to be realistic. Um, if you know that after three things on the list, you will stop and you won't do any more, or your brain is like, it, you can't you can't force yourself to do any more, then don't put more than three things on the list. Um, you can write down the awards so, um, or something to motivate you. So during NaNoWriMo, um, with the last, what well, was one of my goals, I needed to get this many chapters done. I wanted to get like three chapters done. And this is like 2,000 words per chapter. So 6,000 words. And I'm like, I've got to do, I've got to find a way to keep myself in the chair and actually writing for a long period of time. So I wrote, write three chapters and I wrote underneath. When I write, after I've written three chapters, get a nice chocolate from McDonald's. I, that's something I rarely get and it's like a treat for me. So I'm like, to motivate myself to actually do it and it worked um the prizes for NaNoWriMo were a motivation for me to get it completed because I saw they had things for self-publishing so Ingram Spark you can upload a book for free and get free revisions uh, it's got services for editing that you can get discounts for um, other services for publishing that you could get discounts for so if I complete the 50,000 words, I know that I can get that I can get that particular price. Um, if, say, you've got a deadline, you need to meet this particular thing, you're not really motivated, set yourself a reward. If you don't normally eat, if you, if you like this particular fancy latte or something, but you don't normally get it, set yourself as that reward. If you complete your to-do list, get the reward. Um, I use rewards in my classroom um, to get students to actually achieve. It might be small things like rewards are powerful motivators. Number three, you could use a diary or a planner. Um, so this is something that most people use. You can break down your day into small chunks so you know exactly what you're doing at specific times. You can colour code entire sections um, so you know from a glance what you're supposed to be doing. So um, say you've got five things you normally have to do in the day. So work, oh, for me I teach. So teaching, um, uh, yard duty I do as part of teaching. Um, so I, what I would do is I would have like, okay, teaching these classes between this time, break, yard duty. Um, and like, and in the break I would write, okay, write 500 words. Um, and I'll color code that. So each section is a different color and I can tell, right, this point in time, I'm supposed to be doing this. Um, in this point in time, I can do this. Um. So colour coding can work. You could use things like symbols or stickers. So if you see a certain sticker or symbol, you know exactly what you're working on or what you're supposed to be doing at a particular moment in time. Um, number four, timers. Now, you can use timers on your phone or online to break up your tasks or to break up your day um, into smaller sections. So... For example, if you're studying for your maths exam, you can set a timer of 15 minutes to work on a specific section or a specific problem. So say algebra, um, so it's a particular algebra using fractions. Say you, you're struggling with that. You can set a timer, 15 minutes, and in those 15 minutes, you would review the example, do three practice questions. At the end of 15 minutes, you stop, you have a break. Could be a five minute break, could 
be a 10 minute break, but you stop, you get out of your chair, you do something else, you may um, go get something to drink or eat, but you have a short break just to separate yourself from the problem. So when you come back, you come back with fresh eyes. Um, if you do use timers, I wouldn't, like in those breaks, I would not look at Facebook or Twitter or um, any other social media because you will get dragged into it and you will find it difficult to stop. Um, especially if you're using timers or any sort of method to ma manage your day, the breaks are important because if you continue working on something without a break, you will get drained and it, it will make it more difficult for you to complete the tasks that you need done. Five. Now, number five is a visual timetable. Now, visual timetables are often used to help those with um, autism spectrum disorder, so ASD, or um, people with intellectual disabilities or impairments to help them set their routine and manage their day. That's generally what it's used for. That's a tool that's used in um, special schools. Um, it's also used in primary schools as well. You have visual timetables on the whiteboard here in Australia and it helps you break down the day and you see a particular image, you recognize, okay, we do this first and then, then this next. Now, even though it's generally used for that, anyone could use a visual timetable and it's helpful for anyone. If you work better with visuals, a visual timetable will help you more than, say, a list of 10 things. Um, I use a visual timetable that's, like, colour-coded, so I know certain times of the day I'm at work and I'm supposed to be doing a specific set of tasks and not something else. Um, and I use little images, um, have, like, stickers of, like, little images on a little card, like... Um, picture of a teacher in front of a whiteboard for when I'm supposed to be teaching, um, a film reel when I'm supposed to be making YouTube videos, a um, picture of a person practicing the violin and writing 30 minutes when I'm supposed to be practicing the violin. Although I have been putting that off for a while, I'm starting to get back in the routine for it, um, a picture of a book when I'm supposed to be maybe reading something. Um, or a picture of a piece of paper with lines, like one I'm supposed to be writing or anything. So use specific images. You put them on the board, on this board. It, uh, it's easy to make. I made it. It's easy to make. It took me 10 minutes to make and then like 10 minutes to like print and get it all cut up, cut up and laminated. Literally you just create a visual timetable on the board on a, like you can create it on a whiteboard and just have little cards with the pictures on it with blue tack and just stick it on um you can buy one of those daily like the daily whiteboard things where you've got each day and it's got specific times on there already and all you do is you make the little cards with the images and you just use glue tack to stick it on um the one i used I actually made from scratch using an A3 timetable I created, so I created it and color coded it the way I wanted, set it out the way I wanted, created the cards, laminated both the cards and the board, and I bought these little, it's like Velcro little buttons to stick on the back of the card and on the board, so it could stick on, because I knew I would only be using it at certain times and in certain places. Um, I find the visual timetable helpful um, because it's in a spot where I can see first thing in the morning. I find it really helpful so I know exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, I can quickly look at it and see, right, I need to um, make the YouTube video or I need to get ready for work or whatever. Um, making it from scratch cost me about ten dollars to ten Australian dollars that's about six US six US five British pounds roughly um, so it's not much and you can make it for less than that probably um, so yeah uh, those are five 
tips or strategies that you can use to help you manage your time and your day to improve focus and to meet your goals. I've used all of these strategies before. I try to use a mix so I can meet my personal goals because some days certain strategies work better than others. Um, so that's the end of the video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please leave press the like button below and leave any comments. I will. I look forward to reading them. Um, we try to upload videos Wednesdays and Saturdays at least twice a week. The days may change. Um, if you want to be notified for when I upload, press the subscribe button below. Thank you for listening.